Subscribe to significant. What up, y'all? It's significant back with another video. Today I'll be giving uh, an interview on director Siddharth's uh, upcoming film Doppelganger. So there's like lots of actors in it, and um, I just watched the teaser. It's just mind blowing. So I decided like to have an interview with the director upon how the film will be like looking like. So which is why I'll be like answering my questions with the help of him in this video unfortunately i can't meet with him like person to person face to face kind so i'm gonna have to do like a online meeting chat with him in order to like get the interview complete so that's how the video will be today i ask him questions about how the movie was made and like what are the special things about it and like why do you want to release it like this so enjoy the video Ah, yes. Hello, Sid. Oh, hi, sir. How are you doing, sir? Like, how is your work and your family? Everything's all right, sir. Yeah, I'm doing fine. By the way, your content is pretty good. Me and my family just watched it as well. And yes, well, I come to, like for an interview about like your film Doppelganger, because I checked out your first look around like a uh, couple of uh, months ago. and uh, i was like very intrigued about how the concept looks like and um, also this teaser i'm just mind blown about the fact that you shot this editing is just so good like it would be good if you like to tell us how you shot the film in today's interview sir well it's a long story but i'll try making it a bit short because i have like couple of meetings but it's all right i'll tell you how it works anyway In 2022 I pitched like a a project to the producer of Swag Productions as like a um, studio subsidiary of Whirlpool Productions it's like a big uh, movie company apparently they're going to be like making um, like another cinematic universe over there and I was like pretty intrigued about it and decided like to put in my film as a submission for that kind so in order for that um, as part of this um, thing to get my film to be part of their production company i'm going to have to create a film of my own so i shown the producer my earlier film firebird which was like released around 2021 like around let's say 3 years ago so he was really uh, he felt very emotionally moved about that film and then he says that i have lots of potential and then he says that um, even though firebird seemed to be looking good there's still not much enough of the my career going on like i haven't shot a more movies yet and that's the point which i came to the producer there so my pitch project initially was going to be about like a supernatural revenge film where it'll be like a person who got killed by a group of people and that the dead body later comes back to life as some kind of a ghost and then seeks revenge to kill their group but then the producer was like um, well um, is there any meaning towards that f- movie if you want to create something supernatural there should be some kind of like a basic suspense or any good meaningful tone kind and well um, let me tell this in his words exactly so what he said was that um, the script is pretty mediocre and then um i wonder how the film would do well as a supernatural kind because everyone generally find it as very mediocre like taken for example is like most of, is basically just like a direct to video film however that was not my intention to create that kind and um they're telling that um i my film doesn't have like a working title yet and then i'm just like told him my working title will be sr2 but i'm telling that's not enough not enough that's why i had to come up with a different name something of unique kind but somehow produ- producer rejected my uh, horror film project and i had to think about some more of the ideas which is why i started watching more of these independent films like for example everything everywhere all at once which was indeed a terrific movie i decided to take borrow some examples from how they recreated the action kind and then i was thinking to myself maybe i should create an independent movie like that 
But at the same time, nowadays, it's a rare feat for an independent film to get that much of popularity because there are some films which like bomb too hard, kind of. Which is why I was keeping, I was thinking about what would be the next hit factor for what the audience would be intrigued upon watching. That's the moment I realized I need an explosive action film kind. Picture this. This is what I'm going to be telling to the producer. It's about an old man whom he got killed. But turns out he was returned back to life. Upon which those murderers suddenly get killed one on one until they realize that the person whom they killed is actually alive. But the person whom they killed is nothing but a fake one, an artificial person, a humanoid, a robot. Whereas the real person manages to kill that entire group of murderers. And that is when I got my working title as Doppelganger. Yes. Oh, that's a nice idea which you got, sir. So, what did the producer say exactly? Uh, yes. The producer was like, um, he was happy with the idea, but he felt like it was a big risk. Like nowadays, there are some films like Expendables 4 or Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, like these big budget action films, which suddenly like flopped, it seems. And he's worrying that um, my project sounds like a hundred million dollar worth film. And then they told that the production studio doesn't have that much of uh, funds to require that. And I'm telling that if, if, he, if my plan were to be like, a hundred million dollar budgeted action film, then I would have to rely on practical effects and some special effects. Visual effects should be reduced to at least like 5% of the time. So that there won't be any kind of pressurized uh, problems for the company. And I willingly approved of his request. And so the producer granted me permission to commence with the film. And that's how it all started. I got my actors ready over the course of like two months. Then started like the shooting, it continued for like a year long and then post-production kind lasted for like at least say a month or two. And then it just got ready for the marketing. And overall our budget came up to at least um, let's say approximately 10 million dollars otherwise if i were to tell it in precisely then the film has a budget of 9.1 million dollars hundred thousand is only spent on the marketing budget because it was actually meant to be marketed as action figures because there are lots of kids who like that kind whereas the nine million just went on the entire making of the film the entire creation and then like the sponsorship for like uh, big uh, big budget uh, premium for large formats kind like IMAX, 4D, X, 3D kind. We managed to afford it all in just $9 million. And the production company just got um, very happy upon hearing the news. Uh -huh, that's nice. You managed to make the producer convinced upon it. Well, that sounds like a good thing. But like, how did you make this movie? I mean, I get with the pitch and how it all started, but like what sort of necessary things do you do in that movie? Okay. So on September 16, 2022, I got my cast entirely ready. So the actor will be playing as the main antagonist is Anthony Ramos and the one who will be playing as the main protagonist will be Hugh Jackman. I luckily got him through one midnight phone call on September 16th. He's ready for the role until he like had to leave the shooting for a while for like some for his next movie Deadpool and Wolverine. He had to play as an important character there. Wolverine himself, yes. Anyways, during that co course of time, we made like um, first scene was an action sequence, including like a practical uh, car crash. Yeah, because um, my budget is like 9 million, so I won't be able to make it so something look like as 100 million. I wanted to be like taking 
closer detail on, on to how to implement these special effects. So we just took a real car, we made like a sling, we made it crash into some kind of a block. With that, we cropped that all out and uh, add in some explosive effects. And with that, we created an explosion kind of a car. And then we filmed like some, um, like uh, tons of action sequences involved. Like, so Hugh had to actually uh, literally fight them all. Well, um, it's just like, uh, it's all fast editing in here. You won't be able to see how the punches will look like, but one of my side actors actually got w injured for like a while. He got like a bruise in his leg after um, Hugh himself has um, like kicked him in the leg during one scene. But otherwise, the blade effects, the guns, they're all just practical. We just, uh, I'll add him some visuals afterwards. And then we got our first epic action scene. It's more of a conversational film, like all chatters going on. However, action will be very enjoyable, including the climax part, where we did entirely practical effects once again. I got inspired from the Dark Knight scene involving the truck flip. And I decided to implement on that ambulance crash sequence. And the result went very well. We got a surprise cameo as well. Then after the film was ready, production is completed, pre-production is completed, principal photography is done, editing, cinematography, then cast calls, that were all done. But next for post-production, we had to like do some, um, we had to like, let's say, do some de-aging in some scenes. Like there are some flashback moments which involve a young Hugh Jackman over there as the main character. The uh, flashback will be very much more dark kind, be more like sentimental. I decided to implement that kind of tone because you'll be having a good mix of commercial elements in an action film rather than being just action, no logic kind. But anyways, for this de-aging, we called in a double negative group in UK, also DNEG who worked in many famous films like um, Avengers, Endgame and even more. So we called in for like 3D conversion, just like how they worked in for Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Then once that's all completed, we informed the IMAX corporation that we'll be releasing the film just as a request and they approved of it. Then we did for like um, 4D, which that includes 4DX everywhere and 4D cinemas in South Korea and Japan. And then for Dolby, we established this kind of system around the world. And um, we have also gotten a Dolby screening going on at um, Leicester Square in London. We'll be like screening our film there as part of like a Dolby uh, Atmos recognition kind of night. Well, uh, the official film will be releasing on August 15th. We got our sensor details completed. We got approval from all around the world. We just made some cuts and that's how we made the film. Yes, it took like around a year and some delays with our uh, main protagonist, but it's all right. I'm glad that we finished this film. All right, that's cool. Anyways, what do the people think about like internationally? Is there anything, something special about this movie? Well, um, after our theatrical release, we, our film has been selected for the Midnight Manners category in Toronto's International Film Festival. This is where we'll be competing against many films around the world, including some horror films, some comedy films. And I can't wait for us like to get some acknowledgement. But yeah, anyways, coming to this classification. Well, um... My intention was to make this film like pretty much a violent action thriller kind. And it has somehow met our requirements for like an action film with such level of violence in it. So as you see in the trailer and first look, you can see how much of blood is going on. It's all gory stuff happening. Bits and pieces coming off. Guns and knives, punches, kicks are a rare occurrence. It's all bladed weapons and some, it's all lethal kind. Non-lethal is a rare occurrence. So some non-lethal um, scenes can involve some strong detail. So we send this, um, but we got uh, like two prints issued from the, like the British Board of Film Classification in the UK. 
So firstly was the theatrical cut. It lasts two hours and one minute. That is the runtime and it's classified 15 for strong violence and injury detail. And our original cut is actually two hours, 31 minutes. It was basically like 30 minutes above the theatrical one. And it's given an uh, 18 certificate for strong, bloody violence, discriminatory themes and rude humor. Yeah, which is why for the theatrical cut, we had to like to remove like a um, couple of action scenes going on, especially like the one that happens post interval because they found it to be very intense. And um, they also told that the climax was very intense and too much of unnecessary violence is going on. So we made the necessary cuts for it. And that's how it happened. We got two cuts now. You will be receiving for the worldwide release, the two hour, one minute long one. Whereas the director's cut, we might be releasing it for a Netflix platform because we bought like some rights for it. We just purchased around like $1 million for satellite rights to Netflix. And for as for DVD for digital thing, I'm not sure about whether we can try having that enough budget. But I'll try my best to like to give it in DVD platforms once the film becomes like a success. Now for Australia release, which I can see you are already there. It's classified MA15 for uh, strong bloody violence. Yeah, which means people above 15 can watch this and those who are below that require some parental guidance. Well, since you're like a teenager, I can see how, how excited you are for this film. And it's a good thing you're 15 years old, so you can perhaps watch it with your parents or watch it by yourself. And uh, in my hometown, India, the film was given an uh, A rating for like um, this uh, excessive violence going on. I mean, we toned down the level of violence in this theatrical cut, like two hours one, but they found it to be still gruesome. So got an A-rated film. And for in India, it's basically Hugh Jackman's second A-rated film releasing there since Deadpool and Wolverine. But I'm still wondering about once this film is released, I wonder whether it'll still do good collections uh, when competing with uh, his other film, Deadpool and Wolverine. But that's all the details I have to give to you today. Well, that's some good um, words you have said there, sir. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this movie on August 15th. I'll be sure to check it out in VMAX. Or perhaps like in that, if there's 3D available, I can go watch it myself. So, anyways, thanks for uh, coming over to this interview. And I wish uh, luck for your future endeavors. Like, I mean, if you want to create a, like a cinematic universe, then please do. Because after watching your teaser and then Firebird, I believe there are like some familiar references with it. In fact, um, I wish you all the best. Hope this film grosses more than $100 million. I do wish it for that to happen. Because you uh, lo was, look... The way you shot this film in a $9 million budget, especially with the de-aging effects, it's pretty unique, especially you relied on only practical effects. But anyways, thanks a lot, sir. Hi, ah, yes. Thanks for having me in your interview. Anyways, I'll keep watching your content. Please keep uploading your videos. And if everyone is watching your video right now, or this video, what else, please subscribe to Significant. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. As you can see, my interview with the director has finished. I got my all questions answered. And I am all packed up for the release of Doppelganger on August 15th. And if you are all wondering about who is that director? How come he looks like a Sid? How is a Siddharth looking like a Sid? Because Sid is a short form of Siddharth. And I am the movie director. What the hell? And as you guys know, I am a doppelganger to him. Okay, y'all. My name is Sid. My channel name is Significant. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.
Oh yeah, don't forget to watch Doppelganger on my YouTube channel on 15th August. Hello, I'm Spider-Man. Subscribe is significant to give 